Hi, everybody. This is John Montoya. And this is John Parings. We're authorized infinite banking practitioners and hosts of the fifth edition. Welcome to episode 23, Creating Income with Whole Life Policies. I think if you're just starting this, you can reference our episode six, which is infinite banking as a volatility buffer. And uh, those will tie this episode together. Yeah, absolutely. And before we, we jump into how to take income from a whole life policy and the reasons why it really is a superior way to distribute assets uh, from this overall plan, what I wanna briefly cover is the three ways to access cash from a whole life policy because most people are not aware of it. And the way I learned it a long time ago is I share the story of the three ways to access cash value from a whole life policy. And I call it the sad way, the dumb way, and the smart way. And that's simply because it makes it very simple and easy for yeah. people to understand how accessible the cash value is from a right. whole life policy. So let's start with the sad way. Now, because this is a whole life policy, obviously there has to be an insured. Someone's life has to be insured in this policy. And when that person passes away, ultimately there's a tax-free death benefit that gets paid out to the beneficiaries. So that's one way to access the cash value. That cash value will blossom, turn into that death benefit. And we call it the sad way. Obviously we want to keep that from happening for as long as possible, but that is the first way that cash value can be made available. It's in that sad event. The second way is the dumb way, which is when you physically remove money from a whole life policy. Think of it like putting money in a bank account or even a 401k. When you physically take a distribution, you take a withdrawal from those accounts, you're removing money from that account and you're interrupting the growth of that money. Not only that, it can create a taxable event. So that's why we call it the dumb way. There's a superior way to access money from a whole life policy, and that's the smart way. And that's when you utilize the policy loan feature to take a loan, and how you use that loan is completely up to you. Remember, we call this a multi-use strategy. Well, in retirement, this is one of the ways that you can create income. By taking a policy loan, it's a non-taxable event. And you can use that to supplement your income in retirement. Yeah. And if, if you don't mind, I'll circle back to some of these, you know, number one, the sad way, you know, uh, the insured doesn't necessarily have to pass away in order to get uh, access to that death benefit and access to money from the life insurance policy. You know, if they, if they get a terminal illness or a chronic illness, or they become disabled, those are some other ways that life insurance policy, uh, death benefits and cash value can be accessed using a permanent, uh, we would prefer a whole life insurance policy with a, with a mutual insurance company. And then when we say the dumb way, if you read Becoming Your Own Banker by Nelson Nash, the you know, creator of the infinite banking concept, you know, really the, when you pull money out to use, what you're doing is essentially stealing the peas. You know, you're getting rid of your inventory that's making you money and you're just putting that out there and consuming it, right? And so that's that's another way to think of, you know, pulling money out of a life insurance policy that'd be stealing the peas. And then as far as the smart way goes, you know, you mentioned being able to get money for income in retirement. Well, that income before retirement, you know, using policy loans could be used to buy other income generating assets that create even more income for you 20, 30 years down the road in, in retirement. So I love the simplistic approach. And then we just can build on top of that and, and start talking about different ways that, that, that those can be used. Yeah. Because if you're doing infinite banking, right, it's not like you're putting premium into a whole life policy and letting it sit there until you decide to retire, you're hopefully taking advantage of what IBC has to offer. And you're using those cash values to acquire other assets, to multiply your asset base, because that's the real beauty of infinite banking. It's the ability to have total ownership and control of this pool of money that you can use for any purpose. Uh, but as a standalone, it is going to provide you with an additional 
income stream in retirement. Uh, so hopefully the listeners out there are taking advantage of what IBC has to offer so that they really turn this into an and asset. They have it for not only retirement, but they have it in between you know, the, the decades leading up to retirement so that they can multiply their asset base and really generate multiple assets that can provide an income stream. That's awesome. So those are the three ways to access cash value from a whole life policy that I've talked a lot about uh, with my clients, but there's also a fourth way that doesn't get too much of a mention. And that's the fact that you can take the cash value within a whole life policy and you can annuitize that. You can turn that cash value into a guaranteed income stream for life. And that's what a annuitization is. Now, very important to note that you can go from permanent life insurance to an annuity, but you can't go the other way around. The power of an annuity is that you can generate basically what we call mailbox money. Think of it like your own private pension where you have that income. Even if the account balance goes to zero, you're guaranteed the life insurance company is going to continue to drop money in your mailbox every single month no matter how long you live. So that's actually the fourth way to create money from a whole life policy. And I think that's huge. You know, when you, when I'm talking to young people, especially who, you know, maybe aren't married yet, or, you know, maybe don't see the value in some of the, you know, legacy planning for, you know, in terms of what they're going to do with everything that they're earning, you know, during the course of their life. And this is a great, this is a great concept where a guaranteed permanent, life insurance death benefit gives you options in the future. And so even if you don't need the death benefit, right, even if you don't want to pass anything along, well, you can take that, take this policy, just like you mentioned, and advertise it. And, you know, there's one thing that's pretty true, no matter what is we're all going to live until we don't. And so taking guaranteed income in the form of an annuity helps protect us if we live too long rather than if we don't live long enough, which is the purpose of life insurance. Right. And it's that longevity risk that everybody has unless they have some form of guaranteed income streams. And, you know, we can look at social security as a guaranteed income stream and I'll leave the politics out of that. But what it does provide is that peace of mind, knowing that there's a paycheck coming every single month. And the problem that so many people that we talk to have today is that their asset base, their portfolios really are so heavily concentrated in market-based assets that unfortunately they they haven't figured out a way to solidify that longevity risk that that risk of running out of money because everything is is predicated on how the market is going to perform and that's really where life insurance solutions help to fit in to provide not only the guarantee that you'll never run out of money but i think as important what what the life insurance solutions that you and I provide, they can actually increase the amount of income that you receive in retirement. So it's not only just about securing a guaranteed income stream, it's about being able to take more income or receive more income in retirement. And whole life policies in conjunction with annuities, they help to do that together. Yeah. And I think, you know, we mentioned in the beginning of the episode, to check out episode six, the IBC is a volatility buffer or whole life insurance is a volatility buffer. Research prominent retirement academics today, Wade Fow, PAU, if you want to read some of his books, you know, he talks about how to make your retirement accounts, you know, all your 401ks and all the different types of brokerage accounts. Just like you said, how can we make those last longer and how can we get more money out of them? And by having say our base expenses covered by an annuity that's guaranteed for the rest of our life and then having a quote unquote buffer asset of whole life insurance all of a sudden we can make our other brokerage type accounts last longer and get more out of them we can we can take a little more risk in those type of accounts because we've created so much certainty on the other side of our financial life that allows us to let those let those riskier investments work harder for us and get those higher rates of return because we don't have to liquidate them if we don't have to 
So check out episode six, which is the volatility buffer. And what we explain a little bit more how that works. The golden rule with withdrawal rate has always been 4%. And I say always for the past three or four decades, that has been the golden rule, a 4% withdrawal rate. For the listeners out there, when you have a whole life policy, when you when you have annuities, you, you suddenly take that withdrawal rate of let's say 3% or for even being rosy and saying 4%, and now it pushes it up to five and a half percent, maybe 6% or even higher. So that, that's a dramatic increase in income. And not only that guaranteed income versus the all 100% market-based approach that everyone seems to find themselves, you know, in that predicament of, of worry and concern about, well, you know, I should lower my withdrawal rate because I want to make sure I don't run out of money. Yeah, control, certainty, options, you know, those are all the things we want to we want to try to strive for. I mean, you know, if if the market's not where you want it to be by the time you need it, you know, what's your plan? What's your plan then? What I think of is that golden number that people are conditioned to project their future retirement account balances to. You know, they need to have a million in retirement, a million five in retirement. 2 million in retirement, whatever the case may be, whatever that magic number is. And the focus is actually on the wrong number because what it all boils down to is not how much you have going into retirement. It's what you can generate in income. And the big question is, how are you going to generate income? And for the majority of people heading into retirement, they have no idea how they're going to generate income from those 401ks and IRAs. And it's scary. That's right. I mean, mostly because you can't. Right. You know, it's like, can you can you buy dinner with a rate of return? You know, you, you, we have to have we have to have a plan for income, and it's got to work no matter what happens. Can't we can't just bet on the market doing what the historical returns have done? But that's what we're conditioned to think. Let's talk about one other item that you mentioned. That's the freedom to spend down assets. Yeah. And a permanent whole life insurance death benefit kind of has two phases. And the first phase, it protects our income. It protects our family against the loss of the income we bring to our family in the income earning years. And a a huge mistake that I think people make is they only have term insurance. And by the way, most of the time they don't even, they have, they're not even close to having enough of that to be, to even to begin with. And then that term insurance will drop off at some age, usually around 60, 65, 70. And then all of a sudden, the only thing they have are the assets that they, that they were able to accumulate up until that point. And they have to live the rest of their life on those assets. And then they have to, and then they're going to, whatever they have left, they'll transfer to the next generation. Well, with a permanent whole life insurance death benefit, that's guaranteed again to pay out when you die, not if you die, uh, all of a sudden the second phase of that death benefit becomes uh, asset protection, uh, not just protecting your life. Now we're protecting the spend down of those other assets to ensure we're going to be able to pass along as much to our family as possible when we die, not just if we die. And so the idea is by having that, it gives us a quote unquote permission slip to spend down other assets. So it could be our house, it could be our retirement portfolios, it could be other real estate assets, it could be our business. We can we can actually use and enjoy those assets while we're alive during retirement, knowing that we're going to replace the full value of those assets with our life insurance death benefit so that our our heirs get the full value of that. And so do we. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's a huge thing. And most people don't think about this when it comes to passing on a legacy. But when you have the majority of your assets in a 401k, IRA, defined benefit plan, all that money is going to be taxable to them. It, it's right. a huge, huge tax liability. Give yeah. you an example of a million dollar 401k IRA. If you happen to have money in that type of qualified account, when you pass on, you know, you name your kids as your beneficiaries, all that million dollars is taxable as income. And so what you think of as a million dollar account value 
to them, at best, they're going to clear half of that. That's not why you fund those accounts, but there is something to be said about leaving money to you know your next generation, but to have half of it or more go towards Uncle Sam, there's one way to be generous, but I, I would advise against that way. Yeah. What about being generous to your family instead of Uncle Sam? And you know, you brought up a good point that that's not the best way to, not the best use to for those accounts. But I would say most people, that's their priority is that are those types of accounts. And so that's their only thing that they have that's going to that's going to have to cover their retirement. It's going to have to cover, you know, what they pass on to the next generation. I think a lot of people don't realize there are some other things that can be added on that can make that plan work so much better. And tying into what you said, when, you know, we're, when we use a qualified plan or something like that to, as our vehicle to pass value along to the next generation, you know, we're, we're probably only going to pass along around half of that because of the taxes due. Well, it, ties nicely into some strategies that can be used to offset some of those taxes. And a charitable remainder trust is one where, for example, let's say you've got a property that if, if anyone's like me, you know, my, when my dad moved out of the house we grew up in, the house itself wasn't really what we wanted. We wanted the value. And so very often, a lot of people's biggest asset is either their qualified plan or retirement plan and their house. Well, what if you could donate that house to a charity that you believe in and like and trust? Well, when you do that, you eliminate the capital gains due on that house. And since you've donated the house to a charity, you also get a tax deduction that could offset taxes due in other accounts. And so you essentially get this, you know, double whammy tax deduction, where if, if we really look out over the course of our lives, most of the money that most of the money we lose in our life goes to paying taxes, paying interest, and the lost opportunity cost on those. Well, if we can keep more of, of the, our assets because we have the ability to replace the value of them with our permanent death benefit, all of a sudden we're creating you know, a lot more income for ourselves because we're able to you know, spend those down. So one last piece on the charitable remainder trust that I kind of skipped over was when you donate that, the, the charity will actually annuitize the value of that and provide you income off of that asset for the rest of your life. So you're not just giving up the value of that, of that asset, you're offsetting tax due somewhere and you're getting, you're getting guaranteed income in the form of an annuity for the rest of your life. So it's a, it's a pretty powerful strategy for people that accumulate more than one asset over the course of their lives. You probably wouldn't do that with your primary residence, <laughs> you know, but uh, if you have, if you're a real estate investor, you could certainly, you know, do something like that. Right, and and these are advanced strategies. Yeah. That as you start to incorporate IBC, and remember, infinite banking really is a foundational piece. Th this is how you get started in building out a portfolio because money needs to reside someplace. But as you build up your your portfolio of policies and you create a pool of money that you can use to multiply your assets, now we can start to delve into these more advanced strategies that open up even greater doors to either provide more guaranteed income and also uh, reduce your taxation on that income. So th there's there's a world of opportunities out there that go beyond simply, oh, a whole life policy just provides a permanent death benefit. So hopefully in listening to the show, uh, you're, you're starting to understand that there's all types of tools and strategies available, but most of them aren't going to just be found by doing the, the traditional 401k IRA type of investing where you're pigeonholing all that money into accounts that you can't touch for 20, 30 years. Keep in mind that there are greater strategies, ways to create income with whole life policies. And the more successful you get at expanding your IBC portfolio, these opportunities will open up to you. Well said. 
All right. I think that wraps up episode 23, creating income with whole life policies. If any of this resonated with you or you want to learn more, feel free to go to the fifth edition.com. You can schedule a time with us directly. If you have any questions on whole life insurance, finance, you know, some of these strategies that we mentioned, feel free to book a, a 30 minute consultation and we can, we can talk about it.